Welcome back everyone. So the first thing I needed to do when I arrived at Big Bear Lake was go to the Big Bear Discovery Center. It's at this place where you can buy an adventure pass which lets you park at the parking lots of the hiking trails. And ironically this sign in the parking lot actually has my itinerary for the trip. First up, a little bit of lunch by the meadow by the lakeside. And after dropping my stuff off at the campground, I did my first attempt at the Cougar Crest Trail. My goal was to walk up to the Pacific Crest Trail, but there were storm clouds moving into the area and I wasn't sure if I was going to make it or not. What's up guys, so I'm up here in Big Bear Lake and I'm on the Cougar Crest Trail but looks like there's some uh, storm clouds rolling in so I'm thinking I'm going to have to go back here in a little bit and get my camp set up. I'm at the uh, Serrano campground down here at the base of the trailhead. I thought I may walk a little bit longer, it's really nice out here, you can kind of see Every trail in Southern California has its own unique character, its own set of traits that set it apart from even the trails most proximal to it. So I went to work looking for what makes this trail what it is, things I should remember when I'm miles away back home and years away from this trip. And I have to say this trail invoked a sense of peace and tranquility. This is actually a nice trail. It's nice and wide and uh, lots of different scenery. So far I haven't been able to see the lake. I'm not that high up yet. Uh, but uh, I don't know, I think the thunderstorm's gonna get me so I may turn around here a little bit. But uh, so far it's been really nice and peaceful and scenic and plenty of uh, plenty uh, of evergreen trees and a few little wildflowers here and there uh, mixing it up uh, a really nice experience Check out this uh, western juniper tree. It's all mangled and beat up. Been through some battles. I'm like halfway to the PCT, but the uh, thunder keeps going so. It's, it's kind of weird, there's like uh, clouds up in here, but on the other side, oh, it's nice clear sky. So it's kind of confu confusing as to what to do. I don't know if it's uh, blowing my way or not. If it's just gonna keep blowing that way. But if it does come this way, I need to book it back to camp and get everything set up. I already set up my tent and fly. And, uh, but my tent is actually in a kind of a bad spot for rain. So I may have to switch that around if it does start to rain. I'll have to check the weather later. See how imminent it is. And uh, maybe go from there. I did see a little spot at camp where someone had made a nice flat place and made some ditches around it just to keep the rainwater from washing towards their tent. So that may be an option. I didn't pick that one to begin with though because it was kind of on a little bit of an angle and you know, you wanna get as flat as possible when you're trying to sleep. You don't wanna be uh, fighting the gravity all night and that disrupts your sleep. Well, here's another twisted and gnarly juniper tree. It 
So I'm like two thirds of the way to the PCT. But I think I'm gonna turn around. It's uh, four o'clock and I'm just gonna go back, set up camp, get it all rain tight for the night. And uh, yeah, maybe shoot some footage of the lake down there. I got some time after I set up camp. I'm starting to feel the drops coming down a little bit and I just happened to notice as I'm running back to the trailhead that there's a little structure over here on the side trail. I don't know if I can turn it around and show you guys. You can see this stuff. Looks like it used to be a house of her house or building of some sort there okay it's it's raining so I'm gonna get going here yeah it's getting wet <laughs> Sanctuary. Back at camp, I set up my tent inside the perimeter of a ditch a previous camper had dug for me. For this trip, I'm using a REI Passage 2 tent. And inside, I unfolded my XPED flex mat, which I'm testing out for the first time. This is a rare instance of a 25 inch foam pad and thus it pairs up well with the wider blow-up pads. It's hot right now, like even on the ground it feels hot. Um, I brought this little pad, I could probably just sleep on that and nothing else. You know, I'd probably be warm enough. But I also brought this uh, Nemo Forte sleeping bag, I think it's going to be way too hot for that. And so I also brought one of these Thermalite Reactor Extreme things that I can just use as a blanket. And I also have this uh, climate uninsulated pad that I'll probably just put on top of this uh, top of this pad just to get some more uh, cushioning going on. I also brought this Thermarest pillow. It's one of those that you can scrunch down to half its size and the little uh, peanuts or foam pellets inside will uh, uh, crunch down and then as you want to use it again they'll expand. It's not as comfortable as a regular pillow but since you can scrunch it down and put it in a pack it's just something that's convenient and light. After getting my sleep system worked out I decided to go down to the lake and take some footage. This area does have some nice and long bike paths, so that's always an option for the casual bicyclist camping here. The sun was starting to near the horizon, which gave me some nice lighting opportunities when filming in this area.
Good morning, guys. This is basically how I slept using the bag liner and occasionally the sleeping bag as a quilt. And I'll show you guys the Climate Static V Lux sleeping pad I was using. It was actually pretty comfortable. I bought this specifically because it was not insulated and it's good for summer camping. Here's one last look at the tent and the miniature moat that kept the rain from getting me. Someone put a lot of effort into digging this out. I'm glad its effectiveness was not tested last night. This morning I went with the Summit breakfast scramble and I used the boiling water I needed to make it to sterilize my titanium spork. And here's the egg soup that I made and I'll leave a note to myself here that the recipe probably only needs about 250 milliliters of water. And we'll take one last look at the lovely space I had at the Serrano campground. I don't remember the exact site number, but I think it was in the 90s if uh, y'all want to check it out. I had a good feeling that morning that I was actually going to get to see the PCT during this second attempt at the Cougar Crest Trail. After all, I was only two and a fourth miles away, and the rain had scurried off down the mountain that it was no longer a limiting factor. Wow, you can start to see parts of the lake now. like we're starting to go a little bit uphill here so we should start to get some better views. This path is really well maintained. Look at the uh, little cutout from the path here <laughs> on the tree branches here. So I'm at a local ridge line here, so you can see the mountains on one side where I'm at, and then the mountains on the other side. So I'm standing here at the intersection of the Cougar Crest Trail and the PCT, which is pretty cool. Like thousands of people walk on this trail every year and I'm standing exactly in their footsteps. <laughs> okay, so I saw the PCT and now I'm heading back down. It's 9 o'clock and my adventure pass expires at 10 so I'm going to book it down here. Yesterday when it was raining I had to cinch up my uh, pack and run down to my car. Hopefully I don't have to do it this time. I'm just kind of traveling it maybe a little over 3 miles an hour. I can pick up the pace if needed once I get closer to the parking lot. almost has like a desaturated feel to it. Kind of reminiscent of Joshua Tree uh, in the late summer. So if you search Indian Cove Campground Joshua Tree 
on this channel, you'll be able to see some of the colors there. It's not too apparent right here, but uh, every once in a while, get into a situation with some grass. On the way back down the mountain, I did survey several species of grass and bushes for their desaturated and calming color palettes. A lot of these varieties were unique to the area, like this pincushion moss, which seems only to exist in Southern California at this mountainous altitude, that being a small island surrounded by Mediterranean and desert-like climates on all sides. And as I got nearer to the car, I was cognizant that my trip was almost over, and it needed be that I removed myself from this tranquil forest that had given me a much needed rest from the hustle and bustle and work of the city. Okay guys, I'll see y'all on the next one. In the meantime, visit me at camphikelivecalifornia.com where I'm actively publishing gear reviews, hiking, camping advice, and more.